Hi everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with a new dyeing video. Sometimes you just don't have access to bare yarn when you want to try a dyeing experiment. Or maybe you got some colored yarn on sale and you want to change the color because you don't like the color it was originally. Today we are going to over dye some neon stroll yarn that is in the color highlighter yellow. This yarn is a bright neon yellow, and honestly, it's a beautiful, beautiful yellow, but not a color that I knit with a lot. So today we're gonna take these two 50 gram skeins of yarn and dip dye them into Wilton's Violet and Wilton's Black to see how much coverage we can get of this yellow color. I chose to do both Violet and Black because I wanted to do some colors that we've done a lot on the channel so then maybe we can see observe some differences but also you know over dyeing a yellow base with purple might end up looking sort of orangish so i wanted to see just how powerful the food coloring is to over dye this bright bright yellow before we begin i need to wind these balls into some four foot skeins so that way we can give the yarn a little more access to the dye than it would be if we just tried to dye the yarn while it's still wound into these balls. I have wound the 250 gram balls of yarn into skeins and now I am going to uh, unwrap these so that they're just in the circular form, not twisted, and pre-soak them in plain tap water for at least 30 minutes before we start dip dyeing. Let's mix our dye colors. I ha in each of these cups, I have a half cup of plain tap water. And to one, I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of Wilton's Black food coloring. And in case you're curious, this is the new formulation that contains red number 40 um, versus the old formulation I've shown before that has red number three. And then I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon of Wilton's Violet. Um, I like, okay, maybe I'll need a new container. Um, <laughs> oh, I might have, I might have close to enough. With Wilton's Violet, I like to use a half teaspoon of food coloring for every 100 grams that I am going to dye. Um, so that's why I've reduced it since I'm only going to be dip dyeing 50 grams of yarn in. I'm only using a quarter teaspoon. With the black, I actually like to use a quarter teaspoon for 100 grams because the breaking from dip dyeing is a little more obvious um, and a little, little more extreme. But I decided to keep that same amount of dye so that way we can try to really cover up the yellow but I'm gonna keep stirring this until the food coloring is dissolved and then we will start dip dyeing with the violet. I just brought eight cups of water to a boil and now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar. Or a little under two tablespoons of white vinegar. And we are, since we've already mixed the dyes, we are just about ready to start dip dyeing. I have decided to start off with the Wilton's Violet because I'm curious how this purple, this mixture of red and or fuchsia and blue food coloring will look on our highlighter yellow yarn. So now that we're at a boil, I am going to reduce the heat. Whoop, reduce the heat. And as soon as I add the dye, I will stir it up and then immediately start dip dyeing our pre-soaked yarn. And the reason why I do it in this order is sometimes some of the reds from the red number three will crash out based on the, whoa, check that out, that color. They might crash out based on the concentration of acid. But that actually looks kind of cool. It's looking pretty green, wouldn't you say? Now I'm going a little faster than I might always go because and whoop, I do I really want to cover up this yellow. And you can see that I added 
this end in here even though we still have a lot of color in the pot because I am trying to cover up the yellow whoop and that is slipping a bit on me okay I probably should have tied my skein a bit better but it looks like a lot of the red added and so now hopefully I don't get too too tangled but yeah most of the color has absorbed to the fiber and while you can kind of still see a hint of the yellow in there um, a lot of it is covered up in a way that you know I wouldn't have necessarily chosen purple to do this but I think that these colors are actually really really nice um, so I'm gonna let this sit in the pot for five more minutes and then we will remove it five minutes have passed and let's remove our yarn now how oh, funny look at how yellow the pot looks it's like almost as if some of the yellow that was in here leached out into the water now looking at this I you might think oh gee I see a lot of yellow in there and these greens some of them actually do look pretty bright and neon let's remind you just how yellow the Siharn was to start so even in those sections of more this that paler green we have covered our bright bright yellow I'm gonna set this yarn aside to let it cool while we prepare to dip dye the second skein of yarn normally I like to reuse the same dye bath over and over when I'm doing dip dyeing there's still plenty of acid in there and you can do it and still get really really stunning results however for this particular experiment I want to use um, some fresh water just because it looks like we had some leakage of the highlighter, highlighter yellow dye into the dye bath so I want to start with kind of a clean slate before we add our black dye so I will empty this add another eight cups of water and two tablespoons of vinegar and heat up the pot today when I'm wringing out the pre-soaked skeins I'm just doing it by hand I'm not using a salad spinner or anything but I've already added the two tablespoons of vinegar to the pot and the nice thing is that if you can't remember whether or not you've added vinegar yet you can sniff the pot and see All right, but I'm going to reduce the temperature or reduce the heat and pour in the black food coloring stir it up and we're going to start dip dyeing So sometimes this black food coloring tends to look kind of mauve-y. And what I've found personally is that you sort of need to add, um, sometimes add more vinegar at the end to get the rest of the color to bind. That is actually looking quite black right now. Uh, but as we dip in the end you can see that there's a bit of a gradient shift but it's funny because I can't the color is very okay we're at the blue can you see on there we're at the blue stage the color looks very opaque to me when I stick the spoon in, you can't really see it but it does look like a lot of the reds have bound already and I actually want to, I'm going to keep dipping, but get that end in the pot because we want to cover up our yellow. Hot, hot. You can see I'm sort of shaking it around. just to try to give the fibers chance to be exposed to the dye but aha now I'm starting to be able to see the bottom of the pot 
right now. I mean, I know it's wet. It looks actually pretty black there at the bottom. So that's cool. I know in general you don't want to agitate, but these are superwash fibers, so a little agitation shouldn't hurt too, too much. Yeah, you can see that the runoff is fairly blue. I'm now going to add, add this to the pot, and we'll give this five minutes in the pot, and we'll see if I need to add more vinegar. Sometimes those last blues can be a little stubborn, so a little more vinegar can help. But we'll come back in five minutes. Five minutes later and there's still you know a bit of color left in the pot um, I am personally a fan of exhausting the dye just because it tends to make rinsing easier and I don't like to be wasteful so I am going to add another tablespoon of white vinegar to the pot in some of my it's just in my experience I know that to get the rest of this blue from the black to bind, it helps to add a bit more vinegar. And you can see already, huh, it's looking a bit greenish now, but the extra vinegar just kind of, it just helps. So I am gonna let this go another five minutes and then we'll see where we're at. After five minutes with increased vinegar, not much, not too much of a change, but interesting. If I look, you can definitely see a tiny bit of red looking color on the yarn. And then there's like the nice dark green at this end. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat and let this yarn cool a bit in the pot before I remove it. Um, I'm not, you know, upset that the, <laughs> the dye didn't exhaust completely. You could absolutely remove it to the bowl and let it cool out of the pot, but when there's this much dye added, some extra time with the heat doesn't hurt. The, the dye pot has cooled considerably, and our water is also a lot clearer than it was. Although you could still see some yellow, um, which I believe is coming from our highlighter yellow yarn. Um, but let's see if I can so yeah, so we've got, I'm going to be really curious to see how this dries because it looks very black at one end with some bits of dark green poking through, which I think will look really, really gorgeous when it's knit up. And this one, just right now, you can't really even see any hint of the yellow that we started with. So I'm going to let this cool completely before we wash both of these skeins of yarn. We are ready to wash our yarn. So I've got cold tap water, which I'm going to add a little bit of some liquid dish soap. And then I am going to add the highlighter yellow yarn that we dip dyed in Wilton's Violet Food Coloring. And you can see that all of the color remains in the yarn. I'm also going to go ahead, while we're at it, and add the yarn that we had dyed in with the, the same color highlighter yellow yarn that we did dyed with black. You can see that we've got like this deep green at the last part to go in, and it's hard to know what color the rest of it is. So we'll have to wait till it to dry. It looks like it could almost be black, which is kind of cool. Whereas with this other hand, we get this nice green that goes from like a moss green to even a little bit of a um, more electric green to this mauve, dusty purple. And since the water runs clear, I am just going to rinse these a few times um, to get the soap out and just to rinse out anything that could be in them. And then I will put the yarn through the salad spinner to remove excess water and hang them up to dry. So I'll be back to show the finished dried yarns, but I think we can all say that the color difference from our original highlighter yellow is pretty remarkable already. Here are the over dyed yarns. And I don't think that my camera is giving the, doing these colors justice. We've got on the broken violet skein, we've got kind of a 
almost an electric green that goes all the way into this kind of burgundy, um, burgundy almost mauve type color. On the broken black, we actually see something that looks a lot like the broken blacks um, that we've done on bear yarn, where we see a very deep reddish brown maroon. And so maybe it's a little more of the brownish red than a true red. And then we've got, instead of the deep blue, we've got this deep green because of some of the yellow that has come through. It was hard for me to get this highlighter yellow to kind of show up on camera because it almost seems to glow and then blow out on the camera. But I think you can see that while we still have a really bright, vibrant green on the skein, it has definitely all been over dyed from this highlighter yellow color. Aha, finally on the pullback, you can almost see how bright our highlighter yellow is. And so when we compare it to that green, we've definitely muted the neonness, even though that color is still there. This was a really fun dyeing experiment for me. I don't think I necessarily would have thought or recommended to over dye highlighter yellow yarn with Wilton's Violet food coloring if I wasn't curious about the kind of effect that we could have. It was really, really interesting to see this fuchsia to almost an electric blue come out as these greens and mauve. And so it shows that by mixing colors together, you can get unexpected and really, really beautiful results. The safer choice with over dyeing with the black gave us something that is a lot closer to what we're used to seeing, even though our blues were tinted green because we had this yellow base. Hopefully, this video would make you feel more confident about doing experimentation and dyeing yarns that aren't necessarily bare to begin with. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you can be notified when I release a new dyeing video or start a live stream. Thank you so much, everyone.